Hello, everybody. My name is Axel Jans. I'm head of global e-business at Eppendorf, and I have been responsible for the Eppendorf and Science Prize for Neurobiology since its inception 19 years ago, or actually a little longer. I would like to welcome you all to the first virtual ceremony of our prize. I'm your host for this event, and I will guide you through the program. And you all know, normally, we would have taken um, a different approach, and our event would have taken place two days ago in Washington, D.C., at the headquarters of AAAS in Science. And um, yeah, through COVID-19, this situation of the pandemic does not allow us to celebrate the prize in its usual way. So we found a new way. Um, and we, we feel it's very important to do so because um, it is important to recognize top young researchers, especially, I think, in times of the pandemic. And we're streaming this virtual prize ceremony for a larger audience, including many of our past winners and finalists. So welcome also to you all. Peter Stern, I'm the neuroscience editor at Science Magazine. And I was also the chairman of the selection committee this year. Um, as you may remember from what I've told people in the past, there are two components to being successful in science, in the, in the world of science in general. There is good science, good research, but that's not enough. The other part is you also have to communicate what you have done. And with this prize, we are trying to honor when people achieve exactly these two components. Our second finalist, was Ricardo Beltramo. Um, Ricardo started his scientific career in Italy at the University of Turin, where he did his undergraduate studies. From there, he went to do a PhD at the Italian Institute of Technology in Genoa. And then he jumped across the Atlantic and he did a postdoctoral fellow first at UCSD and at the moment, he's still in California. He went from UCSD now to UCSF. And the title of his essay is A New Primary Visual Cortex. Now to our second runner up, Ricardo. You already uh, received the plaque too, I guess. Can you show that to us? You have it with you? All right, now it's official. <laughs> Please uh, give us a summary of your essay entitled A New Primary Visual Cortex. Thank you very much for organizing this great ceremony. Being here and uh, having my work recognized through this prize is really a honor. So in my essay, I try to describe my current research in the historical context of the Italian neuroscience. And uh, I mentioned there are several Italian scientists that uh, in the last century have changed the way we think about the brain. However, I didn't have the chance to acknowledge the two Italian neuroscientists who inspired me the most. And one of them is my postdoc advisor, Massimo Scanziani, a world leader in uh, the field of cortical physiology. The ideas shaping the project that I have described in my essay stem from all the discussion I had uh, in the past years with Massimo, and generally over a glass of wine or a pint of beer. So first uh, at UCSD and uh, in San Diego, and now at UCSF in uh, San Francisco, Massimo has been a wonderful mentor. And uh, his inspiring creativity, his uh, experience, and his teaching have defined uh, the way I do science. The other person who has deeply influenced my work is Tommaso Fellini. And Tommaso is a brilliant neuroscientist and a physicist from the Italian Institute of Technology. He was my PhD advisor and I joined his lab in my early 20s. So Tommaso is the person who put some order in my uh, thoughts at that time. And uh, he really taught me the rigor of the scientific method and uh, introduced me to system neuroscience. So what I learned from Tommaso has transformed how I approach scientific problems and helped me a lot to secure a position in Scanziani's lab. So there, when I moved to the United States, I started working on uh, the neuronal circuits of the visual system. And uh, I've been particularly interested in uh, the cerebral cortex, which 
evolutionarily speaking, is the most recent part of our brain. So the visual cortex, the portion of the cerebral cortex that processes visual information, is one of the most studied areas of the brain. And uh, according to the classical models of sensory processing, visual information reaches the cortex at the level of the primary visual cortex, also called B1. So B1 is called primary visual cortex because it gets input to directly from the periphery and then projects to higher visual areas. Now, these cortical regions are defined as higher because their responses are believed to depend on B1 activity. However, in contrast with this hierarchical model, um, I discovered that one of these so-called higher visual areas does not rely at all on B1. And uh, this brain region is called post cortex or POR. So I found that after silencing B1, the visual responses of POR were still intact. Now, if not from B1, then how does POR get visual input? And uh, we discovered that uh, POR receives visual information uh, from an evolutionarily ancient midbrain structure called superior colliculus. The superior colliculus is the main visual processor of many vertebrates like fish, and birds, and reptiles. And our discovery somehow breaks a long-standing dogma showing the existence of a novel primary visual cortex independent of B1 and dedicated to the superior colliculus, this ancient visual center. In other words, um, our study defines a new cortical entry point of visual information and shows that uh, the superior colliculus has uh, a dedicated space in the visual cortex, namely UR. Now, why is this important? And it, we know that the complexity of our brain is the result of a long evolution. If you like, Rome was not built in one day. And by the way, this is a tribute to Massimo Scanziani, who was actually born in Rome. So as the city of Rome, our brain retains ancient structures, but it also has new regions that developed over millions of years of evolution. These more recent brain areas did not just replace the older ones, but rather integrate with them, increasing the circuit complexity. So a critical question in neuroscience is understanding what role uh, this ancient and modern functionally similar brain structure play in behavior. As we said, mammals have two coexisting systems that process visual information. One is the modern visual cortex, and the other one is the ancient superior colliculus. So the discovery of an area, UR, uh, perfectly placed at the interface between these two parallel pathways provide us with a unique model to study how these ancient and modern neural systems interact and uh, what roles they play in behavior. So thank you again for organizing this exciting meeting and uh, for the opportunity you gave me to share my findings with you. And Axel, I pass the mic back to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Goodbye.